What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. A while ago I showed how you could use camera projection to project the environment of a live action shot surrounding the CG element that you're adding to your scene in order to get more realistic lighting interaction on that CG element. In this video, I want to share another reason why we use camera projection in live action photos or videos in visual effects, and that is adding distant environmental backgrounds in sort of this 2.5D effect in order to add that distant detail for your scene without drastically increasing render times by adding very complex detailed models in the distance where those details won't be necessarily picked up. So in addition to helping to light the CG elements that you're adding to your scene, camera projection over a 3D environment recreation of a shot is also very helpful in adding those distant elements. And if you watch a lot of visual effects break downs from Hollywood films, you'll notice that they use this a lot behind the main elements that they're adding to the scene. Anyways guys, this should be a pretty quick tutorial, but let's get started here. I'm going to be recreating the general geometry of this shot here, and then we're going to project this image onto this geometry in order to create a distant background element for a hypothetical CG project. So I'll go ahead and close our window here, and let's get started inside of Blender. I'll delete our light and default cube here, and now I'll select our camera. We want to go view viewpoint camera and I'll just make the rotation of our camera zero on all axes here and then I'll press R X and just rotate this up like so now I'll go to our object data properties tab our little camera here and then I'll go to our background images select the checkbox here and add an image and now I'll open up that image that I showed you guys right here and we have that background image as reference to recreate the geometry of our shot so I'll just drag over our camera here and I just want to match the general perspective of the shot for now. So maybe just rotate our camera up a little bit like so. And now let's go ahead and generally recreate the geometry of this background photo here. So to do that, I'll just use a basic plane. So I'll press shift A plane. Then I'll just move this out here, scale it up quite a bit like so. And we're just going to recreate the geometry of our foreground elements all the way up to the mountains here. And then we're going to add another plane for our sky in the deep background. I'll go ahead and just scale this up the Y axis. Then I'll just go into edit mode real quick, select these back two vertices, and I will scale this out so we cover our entire area. And then at this point, I'll press E and extrude this up a little bit to where our mountains will be. And then I'll also just just grab this and extrude it out this way. So we don't have to be super precise with this. Obviously, the more precise you are, the better it's going to look, but uh, with diminishing returns. So you can get away with some pretty basic geometry and still get some really awesome results. All right, so I'm losing my plane here. It's being cut off by the max distance of our camera. So I'll select our camera here and just make the ending clip maybe 600. So now we can see everything. Now I'll go ahead and select edit mode and I will scale this guy up a little bit so we can cover our entire area. All right, so now that we have the general geometry of our scene, let's go ahead and select all of our vertices here in edit mode. And now I just wanna subdivide this geometry so we can dial in the reconstruction a bit more in proportional editing mode, as well as project our background image onto it more effectively. Because the more vertices you have in your mesh, the more accurate that projection is going to be without any distortion on the image. So I'll go ahead and go to edge, subdivide, then I'll just crank this guy up, then I'll do this once more, and this should be enough for the sake of this tutorial. Obviously, the more vertices you have, the more accurate you're going to be with your reconstruction. So now that we have subdivided our mesh here, I will enable proportional editing mode, and now at this point, I'll just start sculpting where these uh, mountains are ending up. So I'll just scroll in here, and I'll just start generally finding the shape of our mountains here. And again, you can be more or less accurate with it depending on your own uh, preferences of detail. So I'm just grabbing these vertices in proportional editing mode, and then I'm scrolling uh, the scroll wheel here to grab more or less vertices from the mesh. Um, that's how I'm getting the varying detail whenever I grab the mesh itself. All right, so now we have some general geometry matching our mountains here. And then I also might just drag down some of this foreground geometry a little bit, you know, just so we have a little bit more shape here, a little more variation anyway. Drag these guys down a little bit. This guy here. I'll just drag some of the foreground elements as well, kind of where the uh, where this water is. Now, the closer you are to the camera, the less the projection is going to work, just because the parallax will be more prominent, which is why this is generally used for deep elements. So probably the cutoff here 
should be around where this lake is. So any CG elements that you're adding to this shot will hopefully hide that seam so that the parallax isn't so prominent, but this is kind of up to your discretion. All right, so this is looking pretty good for the sake of this tutorial. Now we have some general mountain reconstruction here in the deep background and some foreground variation. So now let's actually get to the camera projection part of this tutorial. So I'll go back into camera view here and we'll go to edit mode once again. We'll select all of our vertices here and now we'll go to our material properties tab. I'll add a new material and I'll change this surface to emission and we'll change the color to image texture and then we'll add our background image right here. And now what we want to do is with all of our vertices selected, I'll just press U and then I'll click on project from view. And now as you can see here, if we go into rendered view, we actually have our mountain geometry projected on this plane here. Now, this is the parallax that I was talking about. This projection is only going to work from this main camera view. So you can see that if we push in, it'll work okay. But as soon as we you know, start dragging off to the side here, we're gonna start losing that detail. So this technique of camera projection is really meant for those deep background elements that just need a little bit of 3D parallax to them, but they're not totally next to the camera where that parallax will be totally seen. So now we have a pretty nice looking mountain projection here, which we can use as a distant element in our scene. Now we also need to recreate this sky of our scene. If that's going to be even easier, I'll just press shift A and I'll add a very basic plane to our scene. I'll just scale it up here and add it behind our mountain projection, rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees, just scale it up a little bit and bring it up like so and just fill up our space here. And now I'll go into edit mode again. I will subdivide this plane as well, just a few times here. And then again, I'll press U project for view and then I'll add that same material to this background plane. And now if we go into rendered view, we have something like this. So you can see, you know, we kind of see that mountain show up on the projection of our background plane as well. But an easy fix to that is just maybe just scaling up our sky image a bit and bringing down that deep background plane. So now we can actually do a little parallax move without those mountains of the plane being totally seen. So you can see I can do some very basic camera moves now and this is how we can use camera projections with 2D matte paintings inside of Blender. Now at this point this is the end of the projection part of this tutorial but we could you know add some foreground elements to the scene so we could maybe create like a little grassy field so I'll just add a sphere to our scene scale this guy up scale it down on this axis. We'll just kind of place this as a foreground element to kind of hide those seams where that parallax will be more prominent. And to create some grass, I'll just add a particle system to the sphere here, make it hair advanced, add some rotation to it. And then, you know, I could use some of our Nasarga light assets here that we sell in a bundle with our Spiderfy add-on. You know, so you have lots of different nature assets to choose from. I'll put a link to that in the description below. It'll be called Nature Creature Add-on Bundle. But yeah, we can just kind of add some grass to our scene like so. And then we'll select our particle system, render this out as an object, select our grass, then just increase the scale and increase the number, 5,000. So now you can use those detailed assets like we have our particle system here in the foreground and our camera projection or matte painting can be in the deep background. Maybe add a sun to match our background environment. So we'll match that same directional lighting on our background photo. You know, maybe we can add some trees to this. We can add like a willow or something just to make it a little bit more interesting. Then uh, check out what it looks like in rendered view. And pretty quickly, you can see how this will be useful in creating some interest for your distant elements in your CG scenes. Obviously, there are limitations to this technique, so you have to decide when you can use it most effectively. But anyways, guys, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what visual effects you'd like to learn next on the channel. And I'll see you next time.